via Skype and also this morning we are coming live via Facebook streaming. So those who are connected via Facebook they are welcomed and those who are connected via Skype are also welcomed. First of all, let me wish you all the best wishes for Eid. Self-respect and pride. Self-respect and pride. Both self-respect and pride are natural to your individuality and there is no difference between self-respect and pride. We consider pride as a bad word and self-respect better word. But basically, there is no difference between self-respect and pride. However, there is a difference between ego and self-respect. Ego and self-respect or pride. Self-respect and pride are natural to your individuality. They signify your dignity. They are your acceptance of yourself. Self-respect or pride is your acceptance of yourself. As compared to this, ego is a comparison. It compares. Self-respect or pride, they are non-comparative and that is the basic difference between ego and self-respect. Self-respect is your way of seeing your you. Ego compares. In ego you are always comparing I am better than the other. I am superior to others. I am better than you or higher than you or holier than you. I am a saint and you are sinner. Whatever be the reason you compare yourself as being superior and reduce the other to being inferior. This is the formation and essence of ego. But pride is non-comparative. There is no comparison. It does not say anything about anybody else. Whatsoever it says it says about you. It does not say anything about anybody else. It simply says, I am respectful to myself. I love myself. I am proud to be, just to be here in this beautiful existence. It does not say anything about anybody else. The moment you go into comparison, an ugly game starts. My respect towards myself is in no way hindrance for your respect towards you. You can think about you in the same way or better way or the way you like. In fact, 
I would love to be respectful towards yourself because if you are not respectful towards yourself, who is going to be? If you are not proud of being a human being, the most evolved consciousness in the existence, then who is going to be proud of you? And your being proud is really nothing but a gratefulness for all that existence has given to you. It is tremendous. We were not worthy of it and we did not deserve it. We have not earned it. We cannot claim it. It is just out of abundance of existence that it has showered us with everything. Whatsoever I have, intelligence, understanding, it is a gift. It has been showered on us. We do not value what we have because we take it for granted. We come to recognize its value only when it is no more available to us. I am reminded of a Nakshpandi Sufi story. It happened. Once a man who was poor uneducated, unemployed, but he hated to beg, so he decided to commit suicide. Rather than begging, he thought it is better to commit suicide. How he can commit suicide? He decided to abandon food and drinks. But he was, and also, in order to commit suicide, he was going towards the river to jump from a high point to get drowned. But by coincidence, at the highest point where he was thinking to jump, he found a Sufi mystic. And the Sufi said, so you have come finally. Here people come only to commit suicide. I have chosen this place to meditate here because very rarely do people come to commit suicide. So this is a very silent place. The man said it is strange that I have not uttered a single word and you have said the right thing. Yes, indeed I have come to commit a suicide. The Sufi said you can commit suicide but I have one offer. How much would you like to have for both your eyes. How much you would like to have for your both eyes? The king needs two beautiful eyes <coughs> and I can see you have beautiful eyes. The king knows that I always sit as the suicide point and that is what the place was known as, the suicide point. People come here when they are going to commit suicide. They are going to do, what are they going to do with those two eyes? they can give them to the king. So whatever 
you want in return for your eyes, you just say it, your offer will be accepted. The man thought for a moment, how much should he ask? He could not think that his eyes will be so precious. Whatever he could think was only five hundred thousand dollars. He thought half a million dollar for both eyes, one million and two million dollars, but nothing seemed to be the right price. Finally he said ten million dollars. The mystic replied, that is accepted. You come with me, first we will take out your eyes and then I will bring you back here to jump from this cliff and commit suicide. The two started walking to get the eyes taken out. On the way the Sufi said, but I have a few other customers too. How much would you like to take for your head without eyes? The man replied, you are a strange person. Who would like to have my head without eyes? The Sufi said, I have a customer who is a magician and he needs a skull very desperately and he is not interested whether the skull has eyes or not. Anyways, he is going to take away all the skin, everything and clean out your skull completely for his purpose. The man exclaimed, Oh my God, then how am I going to come back? And the Sufi assured the man, Do not worry, that I will manage. The man said, I have never thought about it. How much would be appropriate? He asked the Sufi, What do you think? The Sufi said, the offer you have to give, I cannot give any offer. Any offer you feel is right, it is your head, you have to decide, not me. Any offer and it will be accepted. So the man sold his skull for another ten million. On the way, the, as the two were walking, the Sufi asked, Would you like to sell the remaining body too? Because what is the point? You are already dead. Your eyes are sold. Your head is gone. What is left? There is no point in keeping the body. And I have another customer who is a scientist and he dissects the body for his experiments. Therefore he is always in need of the bodies, fresh bodies. Because once he dissects one body and experiments, it cannot be used. And he will be absolutely happy because he cannot get such fresh bodies that have only just died. There was a person, his name was Gray. He is considered to be the father of modern anatomy. He has written a book on anatomy which is considered to be a classic. He used to live around the graveyard and he will keep on watching 
during the day or any time the bodies used to come to the creme to the cemetery for burial in the night when everyone has gone he will dig out the grave take out the body dissect continue his experiments and before the dawn he will put back the body into the grave and cover the grave this is how he dissected 350 bodies in order to write that classic on anatomy known as gray's anatomy which is a pride for any medical student so it is they always in the hospitals those bodies that are left in the mortuary unclaimed they are used by the students to carry on their experiments on surgery so the sufi said and he will be absolutely happy because he cannot get such fresh bodies that has only just died the eyes have been taken the head has been cut but the body will still be warmed it is like a flower torn from the branch while it is still alive it will take two or three days to fade away completely the man said but what about suicide suicide is is suicide and the mystic said there is no need of any suicide because everything is sold already the man said but who will get all that money who will get all that money the mystic said of course i will get it because you will be gone who else can get it you can think of it as my commission if you want to take it with you you can but you will be gone and when you will be gone you don't need it as they reach the palace the man is started thinking again <clears throat> what is the point of doing what is he going to do he had never thought that his eyes have such value that is his skull has such a value and his whole body has value and this man is going to earn 30 million dollars by selling my eyes my skull and the body he thought about it and said I do not want to do this transaction any more. <coughs> I do not want to carry on this transaction any more. The Sufi inquired, "What about suicide then? That you came here for?" The man replied. now i do not want to commit suicide either i have changed my mind for the first time i have realized that i am such a rich man up to now i have always thought myself to be a beggar i was going to commit suicide because i was thinking i have nothing now i realize how much i have got 
At this, the mystic replied, It is all up to you. It is all up to you. I have to go back to the suicide point and wait for somebody else who may be coming. But think again. You will never get such customers an opportunity to earn the money. The man said, Just leave me alone. You seem to be a Sufi, but you are a dangerous fellow. I used to think that you are a religious saint, always meditating on the hilltop, the suicide point. You seem to be the most dangerous person. You were selling me piece by piece, and finally all the money would go to you. I cannot imagine how many people you have sold so far, but I can understand why you go on sitting there alone. That is where your business comes from. I will take, I will let the whole city know about this and tell them not to go to that point. Be aware of this man. He is dangerous, very dangerous. The mystic replied, I was just trying to help you. You, was, you were going to destroy such precious things by drowning in the river. I have been trying to wake you up. Existence has given you such precious things and rather than being grateful, you are behaving in such an ugly way, torturing your body, you want to commit suicide. In reality there is no customer. It was all fiction. What will the king do with your eyes? and that two dead eyes. And the magician can get as many skull as he needs from the graveyard. And every day people die in the hospital. Fresh bodies are available to the scientists. So there is no customer at all. It was just to make you aware that you have so many precious things given to you by the nature and you are not feeling grateful. You are not feeling prayerful towards these. Don't you have any gratitude, any thankfulness? Is suicide Torturing your body is your thankfulness. Self-respect is respect without comparison. Pride is dignity, a feeling of dignity that existence wants you. Existence has created you and existence needs you. You are welcome. In the existence, you are in no way an unwanted child, an orphan. Moment to moment, existence goes on giving you nourishment, life, light, and everything that you need. Ego is comparative. And because it is comparative, it is ugly. The very idea that I am superior to you for any reason is inhuman. Yes, it may be possible that 
you may have started your journey a little early. The two seeds are planted a different period of time. Their growth patterns will differ. A bud may become a flower today. The next one will become tomorrow. And the third will become a flower day after. Each bud, their destiny is to become flower. But the process from bud to the flower takes time. That much time is required for the bud to become a flower. But today this bud has become flower. Its time has come. Tomorrow will be the time for another bud to become a flower. So there is no bud is superior to the other. Each bud lives its own destiny. So too, as an individual, you are here to explode into your own individuality, your own innerness. The flower of your being is to blossom into the bud of your being is to blossom into a flower. But being proud of oneself like bud is proud of itself that one day I will become a flower. Does not make anybody inferior or superior. In fact, it shows that all, that others also have the way to be proud of themselves, to be respectful to them. I am against ego but neither against pride nor against self-respect. They are the most important human qualities. My emphasis is on human qualities. When you transcend those boundaries, you will realize that it is not necessary. As long as you have not blossomed. As long as seed is in the process of growth, these things are important. You are the seed with myriad possibilities. Depending on what kind of soil you are provided, what kind of environment surrounds you, all that will determine. I recall at a time there is, when I was growing, I had liked the flowers, planting the flowers. On each plant, many flowers blossom. At the same time, many buds grow. So there used to be a flower competition. There is a particular flower called Dahlia that grows in winter. Rose is a plant of winter of that requires a certain amount of coldness for it to grow and maintain its luster and beauty. So in order to compete in the flower competition, firstly the dahlia, you can plant it with this from the seed, or when the plant grows, it forms a kind of a bulb, the root becomes a kind of a bulb. If it is planted with that bulb, the bloom, 
the size, the quality will be different than when it is planted with a seed. So we plant and when the plants that was to be prepared for the competition, we give them a, spec a specific nourishment that is recommended for that plant, remove all the buds, leave only one bud, so all the nourishment goes to that bud and that becomes blossoms into a big flower. If the plant is not being nourished during the autumn, like see you have a rose bed, when autumn is approaching, the tree is pruned to prepare for the season. The flower bed is nourished once again. So all that nourish, so the soil gets recycled to provide the nourishment to the plant. And with that, the bloom maintains its size. If the trees are not allowed to prune, the extra nourishment will be taken away by the unnecessary branches and the necessary requirement of nourishment will not go to that flower. So this is how we do take care of those in the same way. In the process of a spiritual development, we keep on providing the nourishment in the beginning, in the process, until the seed becomes a flower, the individual reaches to that state. The self-respect and pride are important human qualities. I said important human qualities. But thereafter, all that was necessary along the way, you have to abandon when you reach the hilltop. Along the journey it is good enough. You reach empty-handed. So along the journey, ego is, this is necessary. Ego is comparative, it is ugly. Self-respect and pride, often these are used as synonyms, one for the other. There is no comparativeness in it. They are the essential human qualities along the way. Only this much for this morning.